Here I am in front of Victoria's Parliament House. This is where Parliament meets, or the government meets to have its discussions and to put laws into place. But how does someone get elected to be in this house? How does it all work? We've got an election coming up at the time of recording this, so let's talk about it. This video is made primarily for people living in Victoria, the state of Australia where I live. But if you're outside of Victoria, but in another state or territory in Australia, there may be some similarities to the way your state or territory runs elections. And if you're outside of Australia, get ready for a crash course in how other places run their elections. Democracy is an incredibly valuable thing and understanding how a democratic system works and how elections are run is an important part of participating in a democracy. So let's get to it. When do elections happen in Victoria? Well, unlike Australia at a national or federal level, we have fixed terms and election dates. Every four years on the last Saturday in November, a state election is held to determine who will make up the parliament, unless the governor unexpectedly dissolves parliament. The governor, of course, is the representative of King Charles III and is not an elected official, and I can't see that being a problem for a democracy. At the time of recording this, Victoria will go to the polls on November 26, 2022. Or, if you're not watching in 2022, it will go to the polls on November 28, 2026, or November 30, 2030, November 25, 2034, November 27, 2038, and if you're watching this beyond 2038, please leave a comment with a meme that a person from 2022 has no concept of. Before we talk about how Victorian Parliament is structured, let's put it in context. In Australia, there are three levels of government, federal or national. This level of government is responsible for issues that affect all Australians, such as post, internet, money, immigration and defence. The federal government uses taxes to fund its expenditure. Then there are state or territory governments. These are more local and have the responsibility for things like public transport, schools and hospitals. They also get their funds from taxes, but more than half of their budgets come from the federal government. Then there are local governments, the most local kind of government who are responsible for looking after issues that affect communities such as parks and rubbish collection. Local governments receive their money from taxes or council rates of property owners, as well as from grants from state and federal governments. So Victoria is entering an election to elect its state government. But how does government in Victoria work? Victoria's parliament is based on the Westminster system, similar to how Australia at a federal level structures its government and is based on the system they use in the United Kingdom. It's bicameral, meaning that there are actually two houses in parliament. There is the lower house or the legislative assembly. When talking about lower houses or the legislative assembly, I will use green because it is the color that the room is carpeted and upholstered in, along with the lower houses in nations using a Westminster style system. The legislative assembly writes laws and for these to be passed, the upper house or the legislative council needs to approve them. And they will be depicted in red, the color of upper houses in nations using the Westminster style system. Why are there two houses? The idea is that it enables more checks and balances and that there is a less concentration of power in one area. In Victoria, the leader of the government is called the Premier. We don't directly vote for the Premier, but rather for representatives to represent us. There are 88 electoral districts in Victoria. Each one elects one representative to represent them in the lower house or the legislative assembly. Then the representatives elect a leader among themselves. The way the Westminster system is set up, 
it is natural for parties to form and choose their leaders. The party who wins the majority of seats or at least 45 of the 88 forms the government. If no party has a majority, they may make deals with minor parties or independent members who don't belong to one of the major parties to form a coalition government. But how do electoral districts elect their representatives? Through preferential voting. I've already made a video this year raving about how preferential voting is the best kind of voting. There's a link to that if you want to see the mock election that we ran together. But to simplify, there is generally a handful of candidates on each ballot paper. Voters put a 1 next to the candidate who is their first preference, then a 2 next to their second preference, and so on until all the boxes are numbered. The reason this occurs is so that a majority can be found. Let me explain. In most democracies around the world, first past the post voting is the system that is used. That means that whoever has the most votes after the first round wins the election. But if there are more than two candidates on a ballot, this regularly means that a candidate wins with less than a majority of votes. Let's use a pizza party to describe this. Let's say we gather 10 friends and they're having a pizza party. They go to order for pizza from Mono's Pizza, where they can make lots of pizza but only one kind at a time. The friends need to decide what pizza they want. Let's say three friends want Hawaiian pizza but the other seven don't because they believe that pineapple doesn't belong on pizza and they hate pineapple on pizza and they want nothing to do with it, they want anything else. So two pick Capricosa, two pick Meat Lovers, two pick Supreme, one picks Margarita. If we use a first past the post system, three of our friends would be happy but seven would not be. This doesn't seem very representative. This is why in Australia, which includes Victoria, preferential voting occurs. Everyone is asked to rank their preferences. They then run off. The candidate or pizza topping, in this case, with the lowest number of votes, the votes from that one get redistributed. So after the second count here, you can see that the vote that went in the first round to Margarita now goes to Capricosa as it was the person's second preference. Then we have Hawaiian with three votes, Capricosa with three, Meat Lovers with two, and Supreme with two. We have a third round where the lowest candidates' votes are redistributed. And after this round, we see that Hawaiian has three votes and Capricosa has seven. That means that instead of three people being happy and seven people being very disappointed. We have seven people who are mostly happy and three people who didn't get what they want. It's a bit sad for those three pineapple on pizza enthusiasts, but we now have a pizza that is better for the group. If you want to see another example of this from our mock election earlier in the year, you can check out the video in the description. The upper house or legislative council is a little different. There are eight electoral regions in Victoria, each electing five members to represent them for a total of 40 members on the legislative council. The piece of paper is often much larger when voting and there are many more candidates. You fill it out slightly differently. You can vote above the line, meaning you put a one in the box with the group or party you want to vote for, or you can vote below the line where you can vote preferentially for individuals, one being your highest, then two, and so on. You need to number at least five if you want your vote to count. For a candidate to be elected, they need to receive a certain proportion of the votes from the population. This often takes weeks to count and is more complex. I'm going to go into this in a video in the future, but I'm not going to cover it so much today. So the Legislative Assembly is elected preferentially and the Legislative Council is elected proportionally. Australia recognises that voting is an important part of democracy and in order to get as best representation as possible we have mandatory voting in Australia. Victoria is the same. You must attend a polling booth on the day to have your name signed off and where you'll receive your voting papers or vote early at an early polling booth or vote by mail. Failure to do so will result in a fine. This results in high voting turnouts. Many elections seeing at least 90% of constituents voting 
In the UK, as a comparison, where voting is not compulsory, it's been over 25 years since they've had more than 75% of their constituents vote. And that includes in the Brexit referendum. And in the US, where 2020's election had the highest voter turnout in the 21st century, only saw 66.8% voter turnout. And like at a federal level, in Victoria state elections, you cannot waste your vote. If your first preference doesn't get selected and there's no majority, your second preference may come into play, then your third, and so on. So it's important to put who you want most to represent you as your first preference. What's more is that even if your highest preference candidate doesn't get elected, if they get more than 4% of the primary vote or more than 4% of voters in an electoral district put them as one, they or the party they represent will receive public funding towards their next election campaign to this something of the tune of a bit over $6 per primary vote in the Legislative Assembly and over $3 for the Legislative Council. So even if your chosen candidate doesn't get in this time, your vote may help them run their campaign next time. So it's important to consider carefully who you vote for and vote for the person who represents you, your values and what you want this state to be. And all of this happens under the Victorian Electoral Commission's watchful eye. This is an independent body responsible for ensuring that elections are run fairly and that results are accurate. The Victorian Electoral Commission wants to ensure that vote counting is transparent and integral. So they permit candidates nominate a scrutineer or multiple scrutineers to be in the room to observe the count and to ensure that there isn't any funny business. And that's how elections in Victoria work. I will finish this video with a five cents worth of advice. When you approach the election, ensure that you know what you want to vote for. Do your research to consider the issues that are important to you and look into the candidates and parties that best align with those. You can check the Victorian Electoral Commission's website closer to election day to check who is on your ballot form and decide who your top and bottom preferences are. And you absolutely don't need to accept a how to vote form from volunteers from political parties. And you don't have to vote the same way you did last time or the way your friends or family vote. In fact, our elections are anonymous, so there's no way to track it back to you anyway. Elections are such an important part of democracy and people will try to convince you to vote in certain ways. But at the end of the day, we all have the power given to us and we can best use it by being informed about the process. I love democracy and I think elections are brilliantly fascinating. If you'd like to see more videos like this, well, most of my videos aren't about elections, but are about things which fill me with a sense of curiosity and wonder. If you would like to see more like those, please check out the videos on the screen now or subscribe to ensure that you don't miss any future videos. Take care, stay curious, and I will see you next time.